Y'all seen what's going on on the white side of TikTok? I don't know how I made it over there, but baby, them women is divorcing their husbands over this election. They is divorcing their husbands, child. Mm, it's getting messy, messy, messy. Hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel. I will come into a discussion today where we're tackling a shocking trend that's emerged in the wake of the 2024 US presidential election. Now we've seen a lot of drama ever since, but in this video, some palm color women are taking drastic measures to prove their allegiance to the anti-Trump camp and it's getting personal. We're talking about divorces, cancelled weddings and relationships ending over their men voting for Donald Trump. Now, the 2024 election has been marked by intense polarization with experts pointing to economic worries, information inconsistencies and shifting party dynamics as key factors. But when does political disagreement become a deal breaker in relationships? Now, in this video, we will take a look into the stories of women who have chosen to end their marriages or engagements due to their partner's vote. We'll explore the implications of no fault divorce and how it enables individuals to exit relationships without assigning blame. With that said, let's take a look at the videos. I will be right back. He admitted that he was going to vote for Donald Trump. And I'm just, that was it. I, can't, I can't share my life with somebody that's going to support that direction. I mean, this individual is a convicted felon, um, will say offensive remarks about women, about different ethnicities. And I find it highly offensive. How can this man lead our country when he's in a position of power and will openly insult different groups? It's very offensive. I yes. that Kamala Harris is the leader that we need. And she gives us, you know, a seat at the table. And if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. But I don't know how many people would have gone as far as to split with their significant other because of a political view. Do you regret your decision I, to leave? No. No, I am a strong woman and I believe that women out there need to be strong and stay steadfast in their convictions. Ladies, we need to band together. Well, if it isn't the consequences of your own actions. Advice needed. I voted for Trump. My wife sent divorce papers. What do I do? I don't know. You probably shouldn't have voted for a man who hates your wife. I didn't know it was possible to be served divorce papers this quickly. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I don't even know what to say. I'm shocked I married somebody willing to throw away our entire life over politics. Last week we were happy. Today we're getting divorced. She won't have a discussion. She says nothing will change her mind. Insists she is going to report my parents because they live off of disability. But my dad does some cash work auto repair. She wants me to buy her out of the house. We have 300000 in it plus built a four bay garage since we bought it three years ago. I can't afford that. Should have thought about that before. When I told her she was packing her things, she said, I guess you're finally going to really know how it feels by a Democrat. ETA, her name is on the deed, but not the mortgage. I'm not confident that I can reason with her. What do I do? Where do I start? How do I fix this? Is anybody else experiencing this in the wake of election results? I sure as shit hope so. And I wish your ex-wives a lifetime of happiness. This is a PSA for any of the ladies that have been seriously considering divorcing their husband. There's a lot of big conversations happening now that we have the results of the election, one of them being no-fault divorce. That is a type of divorce that allows you to end your marriage without needing to prove that anyone is at fault. Some lawmakers are looking to abolish that, which is going to make you divorcing your husband a lot harder. So here's what that potential change could mean for you. You're going to have to prove that your husband did something wrong, which can be even more expensive, emotionally draining, and time-consuming. Legal battles over fault can keep you in an endless and very expensive fight. Removing no-fault divorce could mean higher conflict in court, which is certainly not ideal for your kids or you. Without no-fault divorce, you lose the freedom to decide when to leave your marriage. Your private decision could be left up to someone else's idea of what's right. So if you're unhappy in your marriage, now might be the time to act. Protect your right to choose what is best for you and your kids before it's taken away. Because the reasons that you want to leave your marriage are no one else's business. All these women like, divorce your husband, we're swearing off men. Who's we? I kissed a lot of frogs to get to that man, okay? I want to go and do that, that's fine. Go and do that. You look stupid as hell. This man thinks that I'm the only woman in the world. 
no other women exist. He gave me the privilege to stay home with my kids. Because even though that's hard sometimes to just be at home with kids all day, that's a privilege. He is the main provider of our household, but he asks me when he can spend money. He says things like, we get paid on Tuesday. He literally thinks I am God's gift to this earth. I gotta tell you, I'm a pretty strong personality, and that man puts me right in my feminine energy, and no man has ever been able to do that. No, I'm not going to shave my head. By the way, I think it's like really insensitive to people who are like going through chemo or have other medical diagnoses that make them lose their hair. I'm not going to leave my husband. Like, I'm all sitting here in this country where you have the most rights out of literally any women in the world. It's saying that you don't have any rights anymore and they're getting taken away. What? No fault divorce may be going away. Here's what we need to understand. A no fault divorce allows someone in a marriage to file for divorce without having to prove that their spouse did something wrong. Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson and J.D. Vance, our future vice president, have both stated they want to see the end of no fault divorce. To require a spouse to make an accusation towards their spouse, especially if D is involved, the effects could and would be devastating. But even if it's not, this will add tremendous cost and delays to getting a divorce. I'm not telling you this to encourage anybody who isn't ready to get a divorce to get one. I don't know who you are or your circumstances. I'm only telling people who are already planning on getting a divorce that you may want to consider acting sooner. This is a message to the ladies who are on here shaving their heads and saying how they're going to divorce their husbands now that Trump's in office and blah, 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 because men are all evil. Your husbands have been quietly at night praying for you to leave them for many years now. Your husbands just never had them to actually leave themselves. But now, Trump is making their prayers come true. So your husbands are very happy. And then a lot of the... I, I never see like beautiful, hot women sit there, shave their heads saying, I'm going to go into this movement that's like, I'm never going to be with a man again. It's always certain types that do this. Like, men have never flocked to you or anything like that, so it's, it's not a loss for us, I promise you. Now, the women involved in this protest argue that societal change is urgently needed and are calling for collective action to reshape relationships, dating, and cultural expectations surrounding gender roles. In a bold response to Donald Trump's recent election win, a movement has emerged where some women are staging a boycott of men by initiating an air strike and shaving their heads in protest. Now, the movement, which has gained traction online under hashtags like Stop Dating Men, is driven by concerns over women's rights and gender equality, with advocates arguing that a strong stance is necessary to highlight issues around misogyny and power dynamics in the wake of Trump's political influence. Now, this reminds of a video I posted a few days ago about the 4B movement, which has gained traction, particularly among women who feel disillusioned with the current state of affairs. Not so long ago, women were discussing joining the 4B movement as a response to men voting for Donald Trump, citing feelings of betrayal and frustration. Now, this movement, which originated in South Korea, advocates for key principles. No marriage, no childbirth, no dating, and no S with men. The idea is to reject societal expectations and patriarchal norms that perpetuate inequality. Fast forward to today and we're seeing some Pangala women take even more drastic measures. Some are cutting off wedding plans while others are divorcing their husbands solely because of their vote for Trump. Now, this trend raises important questions about the intersection of politics, relationships and personal values. Can we truly separate our personal and political beliefs or do they inevitably bleed into our romantic relationships? It's crucial to recognize that the 4B movement and these extreme measures are not just about rejecting Trump or his policies. They're about challenging the systemic issues that enable sexism, misogyny, and inequality. Women are saying enough is enough. We won't participate in relationships that perpetuate harm or disregard 
our autonomy. While some may view these measures as extreme, they represent a growing desire for change and a refusal to accept the status quo. Now, not that I'm not advocating for or condoning this stance, but rather acknowledging that individuals are making choices based on their personal values and principles. Some women feel betrayed by their partner's support for Trump, citing its policies and actions as harmful to marginalized communities and women's rights. For them, this isn't just about politics. It's about fundamental human values. On the other hand, others argue that divorce shouldn't be taken lightly or used as a form of protest. Relationships involve complexities and nuances that can't be reduced to a single issue. Emily Gould's personal account of her marriage struggles and consideration of divorce offers a nuanced perspective on the emotional intricacies involved. Ultimately, I feel people are making decisions based on their individual circumstances and convictions. While we may not agree with others' choices, we must respect their autonomy and their agency. Now, this recent trend of palm color women divorcing their husbands or cancelling wedding plans due to differences in political views, specifically voting for Donald Trump, raises questions about motivations. Are they making a statement to distance themselves from Trump's ideology or genuinely re-evaluating their relationships? I feel it's essential to consider the complex dynamics at play. Research suggests that married couples tend to share similar political views. While divorced individuals, particularly men, are more likely to support Trump, this divorce divide reveals a deeper partisan gap among formerly married Americans. The no-fault divorce is a type of divorce that allows one spouse to file for divorce without blaming the other or having to prove fault. The terminology differs with each state's no-fault divorce laws. But to obtain this type of divorce, the spouse who files simply needs to state that there's been an irretrievable breakdown of the marriage irreconcilable differences or incompatibility. In some states, living apart for a specified period of time, often called a legal separation, can be the reason for a no-fault divorce. But I want to hear from you, my viewers. Do you think it's right to cancel your wedding or divorce your husband because he voted for Trump? This is a question that's been sparking intense debate, especially in the wake of the 2024 U.S. presidential election. Now, some people argue that voting for Trump is a reflection of one's values and character. And if those values are fundamentally at odds with your own, it can be a deal breaker. Research has shown that couples tend towards like-mindedness in their political outlook over the span of the marriage. However, what happens when that's not the case? Now, we're seeing a growing trend of women cancelling wedding plans or even divorcing their husbands due to differences in political views. But is this really about politics or is it about something deeper? Now, studies have revealed a significant partisan gap among divorced Americans with 56% of divorced men voting for Trump compared to 42% of divorced women. Now, this divide is not just about politics. It's about fundamental values and worldview. Can relationships withstand differing political views? Some say yes, citing examples of couples who disagree on politics but share common values. Others argue that politics is a reflection of one's character and values, making it a non-negotiable. So I am turning to you, my viewers, once again. Do you think it's right to cancel your wedding or divorce your husband because he voted for Trump? Share your thoughts, your comments in the comment section down below and let's have a conversation there. Thank you for always watching and see you in my next video as I bring you another interesting video.